Here is another question I received recently. The individual wanted to know if they could cut an opening into a structural shear wall on a concrete foundation. And the first thing I want to point out before we even get started is that I am not providing you with structural engineering advice. I am not an engineer. I cannot do that. You might be better off contacting an engineer um, to uh, figure that out. But I am going to provide you with some information and some of my ideas. You know, if you're just going to do it anyway, I got you. A lot of people um, contact me. They're doing it. Doesn't matter. They're not contacting an engineer. I got that. So hopefully by the time you're done watching this video, at least you'll have a little more information about what a structural uh, wall does and uh, kind of how it would be affected by cutting the opening in and what an engineer might actually want you to do if you um, did actually contact one. So let's go ahead and take a look at a 16 foot wall with uh, let's just say 3 8 plywood and anchor bolts that are spaced about six foot on center and this is kind of a standard spacing. Most anchor bolts for something like this uh, are probably going to be more like three or four foot on center. But I just wanted to give you an idea. If you ran into something like this, a 16 foot long wall with no hold downs on the end and your anchor bolts are maybe four foot on center. You know, something like this you're going to be is going to be easier to cut a three foot opening into. The longer the wall, and the smaller the opening, probably going to be less trouble. Um, the shorter the wall and the bigger the opening is going to be something you shouldn't even do. Now here's an example of a shear wall that is 12 foot long and has the anchor bolt spaced a little closer, 32 inches on center. So something like this might be more important. I mean, you can actually... Now on the interior, this isn't going to be the case, but if you're on the exterior and you come to plywood, you see the anchor bolts six foot uh, apart and uh, maybe the nailing on the plywood is six and 12, six inches on center in the, at the, around the edges and 12 inches on center or 10 inches on center in the field studs, then you might just, somebody just uh, put the plywood on as a, some type of a protective barrier and it has nothing to do with structural um, shear, it's not a shear wall kind of a thing, but on the interior, you, you have a wall with plywood on it, there's a good chance it's going to be structural. Now let's take a look at a wall that's going to be a little structurally stronger, and that of course would be a wall with hold downs that would be attached to some type of a post or even two wall framing studs doubled up. And of course, the larger the post, the larger the hold down should give you a clue that uh, this wall is uh, important. So if you come to a hold down like this, it's a little smaller. Uh, maybe it's all 5 8 bolts, 5 8 all threads or 5 8 anchor bolts. Um, and you have four foot spacing or even 32 inches on spacing. This is going to be a little stronger wall than the previous 12 foot wall without the hold downs telling you that you might not want to cut into it. Now let's make the wall a little stronger. This will give you an example of a larger hold down and then now we have 16 inch on center anchor bolts. So this right here is going to be a little stronger um, shear wall and uh, something you definitely want to contact an engineer before um, cutting a five foot opening into it. Now here's an example of the anchor bolts that are going through the concrete foundation and you might have a problem with this if you're going to add um, some type of use some type of epoxy system and put your own anchor bolts in using all threads and epoxy is the fact that you might not have a concrete footing underneath it, which is what we had here. But now I just drew this to give you an idea. If you have a wall like this with anchor bolts, there's a very good chance you have a concrete footing underneath it. And that's because the anchor bolts are going to need something to hold on to. So here I'm providing you with an example of what the anchor bolts would kind of look like going into the concrete foundation. So you're going to have larger ones where the hold downs are and then smaller anchor bolts where the um, in between the or attaching the plate to the um, concrete. 
Now let's go ahead and cut an opening in this wall. And this is something that an engineer would probably recommend. If you didn't have any hold downs and you had a structural shear wall here with maybe a few anchor bolts holding it in, the engineer might require you to put hold downs in in these spots here. If you had a hold down at the end and a hold down at the end here, you might just need to install two um, new ones. Now, don't be surprised if this is a heavy duty um, wall that uh, for lateral to, to prevent lateral movement, side to side movement, you might need to remove these. You might need to cut into the concrete foundation and install larger hold downs. They might want larger post or um, end support studs. And uh, so this, like I said, this is a whole can of worms, depending on how bad you want this opening in here um, and you get an engineer involved, um, you could, and I have, trust me, I have got the jackhammer out and chipped out big sections of these, of the floor so we could put some bolts in there if they didn't have, uh, if it wasn't deep enough. And again, you could have a footing. You could have a footing under here and the engineer might want a bigger footing. So uh, uh, again, you contact the engineer, you figure out what it's going to take, and then you say, you know what, it's not worth it. I'm not doing it. Or you, you uh, pull the trigger and go for it. So here we have two pieces of plywood instead of three. So we've reduced our strength, which is the reason why we're going to have to put the hold downs in. And of course, here is the footing. Like I said, you have anchor bolts um, and you have hold downs. Very good chance you're going to have some concrete underneath it to support it. Give you a view of what it would look like. Kind of an x-ray vision view. Use our Superman glasses here. And uh, give you an idea. We got the bolts going through the post. Our hold downs connected to our... Um, anchor bolts and a lot of times you're going to have to have anchor bolts in here like I said and uh, if this was new construction there's a good chance I don't know why they do it but they uh, a lot of times they want an anchor bolt um, plus the hold down bolt and it never made much sense to me you would think the hold down would uh, hold this corner down together so again uh, another thing in there that uh, is confusing with the construction uh, business. So that is it for the video. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea um, what might be required if you do cut an opening in. And uh, I just want to point out again, you know, the longer the wall and the shorter the opening, the better your chances are you're going to be able to do it. The shorter the wall. If you have a four foot wall with some heavy duty hold downs, um, at each side here and you want to cut an opening in here and you got enough room you can just cut these bolts off here cut the anchor bolts off and use this probably not going to happen an engineer is not going to want to do that and there are other things you can do you can actually put moment frames in here you know depending on how much money you have to, and uh, how bad you want this opening in here and how much damage you're willing to do to your house to fix everything and make it work. So hope it helps. If it does, hit the old thumbs up button and let us know. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.